In this video, we're going to talk about um, how messenger RNA that was made in transcription is processed to become mature messenger RNA in order to be exported out of the nucleus and turned into protein. So if you watched the previous video lecture about transcription, we've now made our messenger RNA, and now we have to um, do several steps to actually process it to make it ready to be turned into protein in the cytoplasm. So we're still in the nucleus, and we're going to move this out into this. Uh, we're going to we're going to process it before we can get it out into the cytoplasm. View what we've done so far is we've we've talked about replication. You guys know how DNA is replicated. We've turned DNA here into mRNA, right? During transcription, and now this mRNA is what we call pre-mRNA. It's not really mature yet. It's kind of an immature form. And now we're going to talk about how the pre-mRNA is turned into mature mRNA that can then be exported out of the nucleus and turned into protein. One thing to remember is that this only happens in eukaryotes. In prokaryotes, what happens is, as the RNA polymerase is transcribing the DNA, making mRNA, ribosomes actually will bind the mRNA at the same time and start making protein, even before the full mRNA has been made. Okay, so this is one advantage that prokaryotes have, is they can, they can very efficiently make protein uh, in this way because they're not separated by organelles and other complex processes like eukaryotes are. But in eukaryotes, transcription happens in the nucleus and translation happens in the cytoplasm. So we have to do a few things. We have to actually get the mRNA out of the nucleus, which takes several steps, and we also have to process mRNA inside the nucleus to make it ready to be turned into protein, and we're going to talk about that. So there are three main processing events that happen in the nucleus to pre-mRNA. Pre Two of them we're going to uh, I show you right here. They're called the addition of the 5' prime cap and the addition of the poly A tail. Okay, and so in this image down here, you can see a fully mature mRNA. And here is your 5' prime cap, and here is your 3' prime tail. And these are modifications that happen after translation, I'm sorry, after transcription occurs on the mRNA ends. So let's see each one individually. On the 5' prime end of the pre-mRNA, once transcription occurs and you've made mRNA, the 5' prime end gets added to it what's called a 7-methylguanosine triphosphate molecule. And that's this molecule right here, 7-methylguanosine triphosphate. It's essentially a modified nucleotide it's kind of in an upside down reverse configuration, and that is added to the 5' prime carbon of the very first nucleotide of the mRNA. The 5' prime cap actually gets added almost immediately once the mRNA is made. After about 25 nucleotides have been transcribed of the mRNA, the 5' prime cap is added. Okay, and, and we'll talk about why these, these caps are added um, in uh, some later slides. So that's the 5' prime cap, 7-methylguanosine triphosphate, linked to the 5' prime carbon of the first nucleotide of the mRNA. The 3' prime poly A tail, once the mRNA is finally made and finished, the, there are a series of enzymes that will bind to the 3' prime end of the mRNA, and they will catalyze the addition of a long chain of adenine nucleotides to the end of the mRNA. And this is what's called the poly A tail, because it's just a bunch of A's. The poly A tail actually varies in its length. It can be um, up, it can be 10 nucleotides long, or it can be hundreds of nucleotides long. Okay, so each mRNA will have a different length of poly A tail. So the example I gave you in class was one of the genes that I work on. And I'm just showing you that this is what kind of the primary mRNA transcript would look like. Obviously, they're using here in this case T's instead of U's. But um, if this was the mRNA, you can see down here in this example, here is the poly A tail. And this gene only really has about 30 bases of the poly A tail. So not a very long poly A tail. Okay, so that's the 5' prime cap and the poly A tail of the, of the pre-mRNA that are needed to happen before the mRNA can be exported out of the nucleus. So what's the purpose of these things? And this is what I really want you to know. I, I, I focus on this because I want you to understand why the cell does this. It has several purposes, and they're, they're mainly involved in either stability of the mRNA transcript or translation. 
So for example, the 5' cap is added immediately once the mRNA starts being made. But what that does is that, that protects the end of this mRNA from being degraded. There's lots of enzymes in the cell that will chew up any unprotected nucleotide or polymer. So basically any RNA or DNA that's in the cell that doesn't look like it's part of what it's supposed to be will actually be degraded. So the 5' cap protects this end as the transcript is being made. Similarly, as the mRNA is made and finished, the addition of the poly A tail also protects this end of the mRNA from being degraded. So both the 5' cap and the poly A tail protect and stabilize the, the message RNA, messenger RNA um, so that it can go on and be turned into protein. The other thing, the other important thing that they really do is they serve as final markers telling the cell that the pre-mRNA is now mature and can be exported out of the nucleus. As you'll see in our next lectures, there are proteins that will bind to the 5' cap and will bind to the poly A tail, and actually that's what's responsible for moving the, moving the pre-mRNA, or I'm sorry, moving the mRNA out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm. So without these 5' caps and poly A tail, those proteins couldn't bind to that, and therefore that mRNA would never get out into the cytoplasm. Lastly, they're used as, um, as markers during translation that the mRNA is fully intact and can be turned into protein. And for example, you don't want to make into protein some kind of degraded or mutated form of RNA because you could make a mutated protein that would um, have um, cause problems in the cell. So for example, the ribosome will actually bind to the 5' cap of the mRNA to start translation. So without the 5' cap, the ribosome can't bind there and doesn't know where to start translation. Okay, so the main two issues is, is recognition and stability, and that's the purpose of the 5' cap and 3' poly A tail. Remember, this only happens in eukaryotes. Prokaryotes don't do these, met these processing events. And again, we're still in the nucleus. This is taking place in the nucleus. Bacteria don't add 5' caps and poly A tails. And the other thing about bacterial mRNAs is typically their genes are what we call continuous. Okay, so for example, uh, DNA that has a that code for a protein, okay, has the entire sequence for that protein in one continuous stretch of DNA. And therefore, when the when the prokaryote is making this into mRNA, right? Remember, it was synthesizing this into mRNA. You could have the ribosomes on here, immediately turning this into protein, right? Because this coding region is sufficient. That's all there is to turning it into a protein. Well, in, in eukaryotes, our DNA is a little bit um, different. There are stretches where there is a gene in the DNA, and these regions within the DNA are coding for a protein, or sometimes there's regions in the DNA that actually don't code for proteins. They're called non-coding regions. These coding regions we call exons, and these non-coding regions we call introns. So every most eukaryotic genes have a combination of exons and introns. Coding region, non-coding region, coding region, non-coding region. And what happens is the non-coding region, you can't make that into a protein. If you started to translate this sequence, once you got to the non-coding region, it would, it would actually stop protein translation. So in order to actually turn this coding sequence into a protein, you have to remove these introns that are non-coding and put together these exons to actually make the mRNA that will be turned into a protein. And the process of doing that is called splicing. Splicing is the removal of non-coding introns in a gene and the splicing together of coding exons to create an intact mRNA that has the complete coding region needed to be made into a protein. So splicing, again, is the third event that happens um, to turn pre-mRNA into mature mRNA, and this takes place in the nucleus. So let's look at splicing. Every gene has a different number of exons and introns. In fact, you can have genes that have no introns, that only are made from one exon. So you can have a gene that's a single exon and it's, there is no splicing happening. Or you can have genes that have hundreds of exons and hundreds of introns that need to be spliced. 
Okay, so one thing to remember is that it's not a set number of introns and extrons for every gene. Every gene is different and it varies from gene to gene. All splicing in the nucleus occurs by a complex called the spliceosome. The spliceosome is a very large complex of proteins and enzymes that recognize the introns and remove them from the pre-mRNA and then put together the exons to make a fully final mature mRNA. So the spliceosome is responsible for making mRNA. One thing to remember is that a, a very cool thing in eukaryotic cells is sometimes eukaryotic cells will, will remove exons from the gene. So not only are they removing all of the introns that you have to remove, but they'll actually remove some of these exons. And they'll also, if you have a gene that's made up of multiple exons, you can arrange them in different fashions by keeping some exons in or removing some exons, and this will actually create different mRNAs. If you think about it, these have different sequences. This is a process called alternative splicing, where the cell will actually make multiple variations of an, a mature mRNA based on which exons it includes or which exons it doesn't include. This is kind of a complex example, but let's look at an easier example. Let's say we have three exons. There's exon A, this is exon B, and this is exon C, okay? And these are the introns right here, these little lines. Well, we're always gonna remove our introns. That always happens. You never really keep an intron in there because if they're non-coding, they're gonna have be a problem during translation. But you could write, you could make this transcript in a variety of ways. Let's say we only made, we only kept a and B, and we actually spliced out C. We, we, didn't, we didn't keep C in our transcript. We can have an mRNA that's made of exons A and B, and that's the mRNA, five prime, three prime, A and B. Similarly, you can have A and C, where B was left out, okay? Or you can have, again, a transcript that's just A, B, and C, where all three exons are kept in, all right, and so here you have from one gene, you have three different mRNAs that were made that can make three different variations of a protein. So it's the same protein. So whatever protein this is, let's say it's called protein A. I don't know A. -A. All of these is protein A, but they're what we call isoforms. Isoforms just means that they're variations of of the protein. So pro isoforms are protein A. You don't have to worry about knowing this term. I'm just ex explaining it to you. So if you have A, you can have A and B put together, A and C put together, A, B, C put together, and you can see here in this example all the different varieties you can do. So this is called alternative splicing, and it's a mechanism the cell uses to make variations of a protein for different maybe tissue types or functions or something like that. But what's important to understand is that all introns during pre-mRNA processing need to be removed from the primary transcript in order to make a mature mRNA. And this is done, again, by the spliceosome. Okay, so in summary, this is ultimately what you'll see. This is your mature mRNA that's ready to be turned into protein. You have your five prime cap. You have your three prime poly A tail. Remember, both of these aid in stability and recognizing that the, that the mRNA is mature now. You have your full coding sequence that has all of the introns removed and only exons. And then you have what's called the five prime UTR, which is the five prime untranslated region, and the three prime UTR, three prime untranslated region. And these are just special non-coding regions that are actually kept in the mature RNA that help regulate um, how much the mRNA is expressed. Okay, so in, the, in these UTRs, there's other special sequences that can kind of tell the cell to do certain things with the mRNA. For example, in the 5' prime UTR, there, there could be instructions to say, make 20 copies of this protein, okay, things like that. So um, the UTRs are important, but for our case, we're not going to focus on them. I want you to know the three main steps, 5' prime cap, splicing, and 3' prime poly A tail. So again, in summary, we've just gone through transcription. We've turned, a co we've copied DNA into a pre-mRNA. We've added our 5' prime cap. We've done our splicing, and we've added our poly A tail down here, and now we have a mature mRNA that can now be exported out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm and turned into protein, which is what we're going to get to in the next topic.
So I hope this helped you uh, understand RNA processing. Again, if you have any questions, just send me an email or see me on Monday before the exam um, and let me know.